I would urge you also to consider that privacy is an ecological rather than a transactional substance. This is a crucial distinction from what you are taught to believe by the people whose job it is to earn off you. Those who wish to earn off you want to define privacy as a thing you transact about with them, just the two of you. They offer you free email service in response to which you let them read all the mail and that's that. It's a transaction between two parties. They offer you free web hosting for your social communications in return for watching everybody look at everything, and that's a transaction in which only the parties themselves are engaged. This is a convenient fraudulence. Another misdirection, misleading, and plain lying proposition. Because as I suggested in the analytic definition of the components of privacy, privacy is relational among people, and it is not transactional between a listener or a spy or a peephole keeper and the person being spied on. If you accept this supposedly bilateral offer uh, of an email service to keep your email for you for free as long as it can all be read, then everybody who corresponds with you has been subjected to that bargain, which was supposedly bilateral in nature. If your family contains somebody who receives mail at Gmail, then Google gets a copy of everything in your family. And if another member of your family receives mail at Yahoo, then Yahoo receives a copy of all the correspondence in your family as well. The idea that this is limited to the mining of the mail to provide advertisements which you may want to click on while you read your family's correspondence may or may not seem already loose beyond acceptability to you, but please to keep in mind that what Mr. Snowden has pointed out to you is that will they, nil they, they are sharing that with power. And so they are helping all your family's correspondence to be shared with power once, twice, or a third time. The same will be true if you decide to live your social life in a place where the creep who runs it monitors every social interaction and not only keeps a copy of everything said but watches everybody watch everybody else. The result will not only be, of course, that you will be subjected to the creepy inspection, but that everybody you choose to socialize with there will be too. And if you attract others to the place, you're attracting them to the creepy supervision. The reason that we have to think about privacy the way we think about the other ecological crises created by industrial overreaching is it is one. It's that we can't avoid thinking about it that way no matter how much other people may try to categorize it wrongly for us. This is a particular problem for the lawyers. Because the lawyers are attracted by the shininess of transactional behavior, which gives them benefits and causes them, if they are professors, to lunch and if they are practitioners, to dine in elegance. So they are always delighted to discover a transaction that can be facilitated for a reduction of friction monetized as legal fees. And therefore, lawyers are among those around the world most likely to be inclined to imagine that this nonsense about the transactionality of privacy is true. The important element in this is that what is transactional can be consented to. And so you get a lot of law about consent, which, if correctly understood, is totally irrelevant and indeed fundamentally inappropriate. We do not, with respect to clean air and clean water, derive the dirtiness of the air and water from the degree of consent. You can't consent to expose your children to unclean or unsafe drinking water in the United States, no matter how much anybody pays you, because the drinking water must be provided at a socially established standard of cleanliness, which everybody has to meet. 
Environmental law is not law about consent. It's law about the adoption of rules of liability reflecting socially determined outcomes of safety, security, and welfare. When you take a subject which has previously been subject to environmental regulation and you reduce it to transactionality, even for the purpose of trying to use market mechanisms to reduce the amount of pollution going on, you run into people who are deeply concerned about the loss of the idea of a socially established limit. And you must show that those caps are not going readily to be lifted in the process of the game of trading. But with respect to privacy, we have been allowed to fool ourselves or we have allowed our lawyers to fool themselves and them to fool everybody else into the conclusion that what is actually a subject of environmental regulation is a mere matter of bilateral bargaining, which a moment's consideration of the facts will show is completely not true. Of course, we acquired this theory not by accident. We acquired this theory because tens of billions of dollars in wealth have been put in the pockets of the people who wanted us to believe it. 